Hello, everyone. I'm Jen Berryhill, your host on Moons of Ascension. Welcome to our show. I have an amazing guest with me this evening. Her name is Sarah Breskman Cosme, and she is a best-selling author. She wrote um, several books along the lines of the hypnotist journey, and I'm really excited. She's joining us for Sunfire Festival this August, and if you want to find out more about that and, and look at tickets and the lineup and everything, you can check out um, sunfirefest.com for more information. And Sarah is going to be joining us there, which I'm so incredibly excited about because this is going to be so much fun. But she is really bringing this this information forward that I feel is a, in a really powerful bridge between some of what was happening you know, in the Native American sort of tradition and some of the, the timelines and things that were happening, bridging it into the star realms, the star nations. And so um, I'm just really excited to have this conversation with you, Sarah. So would you just tell us a little bit more about you for anybody that doesn't know who you are and a little bit more about some of the books that you've also written? Sure. Um, I'm a master hypnotist. And what I do basically almost every single day is I take people to the deepest level of trance, I regress them, and then they can find out anything they want to about themselves. Usually people see other lifetimes or, you know, in between lives or, or whatever, different things that are important for them to see. But then ultimately I ask to speak with their subconscious. And in that way, I can find out anything about them. I can find out who they really are, who they're really connected to, their true purpose, and they can even heal themselves. So that's what I do for my day job. And that's the way in which I write my books. And the person that started this method was Dolores Cannon. So I basically just use her method. I've done so many different methods over the years and tried so many different things, but out of everything, I found that this works the best for me. So this is the method that I use. And the way I write my books is I, what happens to me is these books are basically written through my clients. So this really crazy phenomenon just all of a sudden happened to me by accident. I never decided I wanted to be, you know, a writer. I never thought there was any way that I would be a speaker either. It just all happened by accident. And the way that it all kind of came about was I wanted to take this class, the quantum healing hypnosis technique class, the Dolores Cannon class. And it was all of a sudden in Florida and I live in Florida. So I thought, oh my goodness, I really want to take this class. I need somebody to regress on the spot, someone that wouldn't mind me videotaping them. And so I just thought, let me ask one of my friends because um, I had this one friend in particular, Jen, who I had known for over 10 years. And I thought, well, she doesn't know any of these people. She's not into any of this stuff. My first instinct was to ask her, and then I instantly regretted it because Jen was not open to any of this stuff, aside from, you know, not caring if anybody in this kind of community saw this information, but she knew nothing about past lives. She, I, she hardly believed in them too, to be totally honest with you. She was a teacher at the kid's school and she was a science teacher. So she definitely did not believe in Atlantis or Lemuria or anything like that. So I asked my friend Jen if she would be my volunteer to do this video and that so that I could take it to a class. And I told her a little bit about what I did. And I said, look, what I do is called quantum healing hypnosis technique. And basically I'm going to regress you. You might see other lifetimes, you know, I'm not sure how you feel about that, but more importantly, you can really find out more about yourself and you can heal yourself if you have any issues. And she just looked at me in shock. This is my friend that I had been <laughs> friends with for 10 years. We sat after school together for so many years. I don't know how many years we sat after school. It was at least six. And we watched our kids play on the playground. And I had tried to bring up different things, like spiritual things, but she was not interested. So she looked at me in shock when I asked her to volunteer for this. And I thought, oh, here it comes. She's going to say, I'm totally crazy that she has no interest. But she looked at me in shock and said, she would love to do this. 
because the reason was she hadn't told anyone, but she was suffering from this brain condition called pseudotumor cerebri. And basically what that was, was a flooding of her um, spinal fluid into her brain. And it was wrecking havoc on her body. There was a huge risk of a stroke. She was actually losing vision in her left eye. She was so afraid that she was working really closely with a team of specialists at the University of Miami. She had to go for regular checkups and they said, there's no cure for this. But the best they could do was put her on heavy duty medication. And she had just basically for about a month earlier, gotten that diagnosis and was suffering in secrecy and hadn't told anyone except her husband, no one from the school knew. So she said, I will definitely volunteer to be your your volunteer because I'll do anything to try to heal myself because she was only 32 and had three children. And the her team of specialists said that she might she might have 20 years with this heavy duty medication, but it was so terrible when she took the medication, she just felt like it wasn't really helping anything, but the side effects of the medication were horrible. So she agreed to be my volunteer. And in her first session or first one that we did together, when I regressed her, she went back to this ancient lifetime. Now this is my friend and I knew she didn't believe in it. Atlantis and Lemuria, but all of a sudden she's remembering this other culture where there were these people that were living in the South Pacific in this beautiful society where they just understood nature and they communicated in such a beautiful way with one another. They could use crystals to communicate with their ancestors. And it was such an amazing society, but the women were in charge there. It was a matriarchal society. The women were in charge because in ancient cultures, many ancient cultures, women subconsciously pass knowledge from the subconscious, from them to their daughters. So they never had to teach their daughters this information. And the information was about different plants, what plants to use for different things, what, um, what plants were hallucinogenic. And it was such valuable information so that they were the um, compassionate rulers or the compassionate leaders of their tribe. And we came to understand that this society was called Lemuria or Amun at the time it was called Amun and it was a beautiful very large society in the South Pacific then we realized that there were different visitors that were showing up quite often because these visitors who were very advanced wanted something from these people we came to understand were called the Lemurians they wanted something and when they couldn't get what they wanted they took my friend's name was Jen. They took her, but in a different lifetime, it was Kala. They took her as a prisoner and destroyed the entire continent with these tidal waves, but they were not like regular tidal waves. They were, um, there was atomic like devices that they set off in rifts under the ocean was produced such massive tidal waves that it was able to sink the continent. And then they took her as a prisoner and she lived in this highly advanced place that we came to understand as Atlantis for 60 years. And it was through uncovering that, that I really got to understand more about Atlantis and Lemuria because I didn't really know much about these places before actually starting down this road with Jen either. And during her session, after I you know, took her past that lifetime, I asked her subconscious, why did they show her that lifetime? Why of all lifetimes did they show her that? And her subconscious said that because the two of us decided before coming into this life to uncover and share all this important information with humanity, that humanity needed this information so badly. So I thought, okay, whatever. It was a nice story, but I've heard so many different things from people over the years. But then I asked her subconscious, what is the very root cause of this brain condition? And they said the very root cause was only just the catalyst to get her to see me because she was not into any of this stuff. She would have never agreed to a session if she didn't have this type of motivation. And so then I asked, well, now that she came in for the session and we will work together again and uncover this information you want us to share, can you release the brain condition? Can you heal it for her now? Since so if that was really the catalyst and her subconscious said yes. And all of a sudden, Jen, my friend could feel it draining. It just started draining like crazy. 
And she started feeling really good even during her session. And then when I brought her up out of hypnosis, she, she couldn't believe it. She was like, wow, the vision's coming back in my eye. And she went back to her team of specialists and she was healed. And they said, there's, they just couldn't, they just called it a medical um, uh, miracle. So we decided to work together again to uncover all this information and all that information went into my first book, A Hypnotist's Journey to Atlantis. And Jen wrote a book called Child of the Universe, which is her own personal story. And so then after that, well, during that time, weird phenomenon started happening in my office that I thought was just a coincidence because I never set out to write these books. I never thought I would ever write that anything. I just don't consider myself a writer. But what started happening that I thought was a coincidence was different people, because I do this job almost every day, different people were coming to my office. And when I would regress them and not lead them in any way, just basically take them through a past life, they would spontaneously remember lifetimes in Atlantis or Lemuria or remember being an extraterrestrial crash landing on earth. And I just thought this is not a coincidence. It's and the higher self or the subconscious, sorry, I call it the higher self, but the subconscious said multiple times, I needed to write these. I needed to write this book. They didn't tell me at that time that I was going to write other books. They just said, you need to write this book. You need to put all this, this information out for people because people are so hungry for it and another really crazy thing that started happening is as this was happening in my office i was working with jen so our second session i brought jen deep under hypnosis and told her subconscious okay take us to the beginning of the story the story you want us to uncover and share with the world the story that's so important and i thought to myself that we were going to go back to that lifetime in Lemuria and uncover it from the beginning. And no, her subconscious or the higher consciousness, whatever you want to call it, had a different agenda. They brought her back to a lifetime where she was an extraterrestrial crash landing on earth for the very first time. And this is my friend who doesn't believe in extraterrestrials at all. And I thought, oh my gosh, like she's going to think I'm even weirder than she already does. Because I had asked her, what are your thoughts just in case, you know, in case yeah. something like that came up. So what are your thoughts on like extraterrestrials? And she said, Oh no, don't, you know, no, I don't really think that they're real stuff like that. So all of a sudden she was remembering in full detail, being an extraterrestrial crash landing on earth and describing in so many details, what happened to her ship and why they had to come to the planet in the beginning, really the beginning and so much of the origin story and I had heard parts of the story from other clients, but what was shocking to me is to hear it in more detail from someone who didn't believe in it. So I'm, I'm putting together all the story and that's what went into a hypnotist journey to Atlantis. But the, the book that I'm going to be speaking about at this amazing Sunfire Festival, which I, I actually... This is going to be one of the first times I'm speaking about this book because I've been speaking about my Atlantis book and the Sphinx book. So I'm really excited to start presenting about this book. The way this one happened was just like the other ones, seemingly by accident, but obviously very set up. <laughs> and I'm, I really am believing it now because it's happening. But what happened for this third book, A Hypnotist Journey from the Trail to the Star People, was I had I had actually asked for, I had asked the universe for a more information for a new subject because it excites me and I can never wait to find out like what else they're going to share with me because it's new to me. I'm learning through this kind of experience. I am not an expert whatsoever on any of these topics. I'm just a regular person who, who I feel very lucky. I get to learn all of these things. But right after I did this meditation, all of a sudden I got this message and on my phone and I knew, I know there are no coincidences because the phone, my phone pinged and it was set to silent. So did, first of all, that 
did not make any sense. I didn't know how a call even got through. Then I noticed it was a message on Facebook Messenger. And normally you have to be friends with somebody or like there's a there's a block there in order for a message to go through. And it was somebody that I didn't know. So I thought, oh, wow, this is so interesting. And it was this woman named Les and she messaged me and said, I know you're going to think I'm crazy, but all of a sudden I had this weird urge to message you and I have no idea why. And I had just done that meditation. So I thought, okay, let me yeah. see where this goes. No so I asked, no, <laughs> no coincidences. <laughs> so I thought, oh, oh my yeah. gosh, how weird is this? What if this is my next subject? I didn't know because I didn't know her. And she didn't know why she was contacting me. So in her first session, as I brought her deep under hypnosis, all of a sudden, this other sounding voice comes through. And let me just describe Les a little bit. She was um, very young, like um, very early 30s and very like bubbly, nice Caucasian woman. So all of a sudden, this other sounding voice comes through and says, my name is Anna Waya, and I'm the one who contacted you. I contact, I'm contacting you through Les, and I'm contacting you now because I'm ready to tell our story. And he said, mm -hmm. I've been waiting for the right time. And he said, <laughs> what gave me the goosebumps was he said he was had been watching me because it was important that I gained their trust. And then now I have, and he was ready to share their story. And he wanted to share what I came to understand. He wanted to share not only just a firsthand perspective of walking the trail of tears, but more about their culture and the connections that they really had. And he kept saying this information is really important. It's important for humanity. And they knew that they could get it through to the people who are looking for it through me writing this book. So I don't write these books. They're written by the higher consciousness. I'm just transcribing it. I never add my own stuff to it whatsoever, but it's just quite fascinating through this whole journey. So that's how I got into this stuff, basically do it so beautifully in how you hold the information and really you know letting it shine through what's actually coming through from the people that you're working with and you know I just I love the, reading the book so I'm going to back up for just a second and, and give a shout out to Mark Howard he is such a tremendous supporter of me, my website, like, I mean, everything that I've been doing since I've met him, he's really helped with star knowledge conferences. And, and we've just, we've gotten to get, do a lot of ceremony together. So I wanted to give him a shout out because he was the one that saw you at uh, Conscious Life Expo. Conscious Life Expo. And he met you there. And then he sent me your book, the, from the trail to the, to the star people book. And so when I got the book, I was like, oh my gosh. And, and for me, it was like a total synchronicity as well. And so I just, I love as I'm reading the book, it's almost like you have the question and then the answer that was given from your, your client. And then, you know, you're kind of leading them through these series of questions as this information is unfolding. And there's like this part of me that's just like, wait, 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 I need more. You have to keep talking about this, you know, but then it moves on to something else. And so as I'm reading this book, it's like firing off all of these things within me. And like, I have so it's, that's what thoughts. it's there for. Yeah, that's I mean, what it's it, there for. They said, yeah, yeah they can and, help and, heal people through the books. And I see like for me, I, I still haven't gotten through the whole thing because I've never had a book where I had to stop so much and process. Yeah. And, and I, I feel like I'm getting activated as I'm reading yeah. the book and, you know, there's, you know, you talk about synchronicities. And so one of the star knowledge conferences that we did, so I was partnered up with chief golden light Eagle for about eight years. We were coordinating these conferences together that we would do on 11, 11 every year. And he'd been doing these conferences since 1996. So I came on board in 2010 and started to get to know him, getting um, to know his work, which was, you know, he works with the universal and spiritual laws of creation and these, the symbols. And, you know, there's, there's just so much tied in with that. Um, but for this particular star knowledge conference, I had this dream 
where in the dream, I was shown like a really old map and there was like a star with a big tree. And in I could tell where the tree and the star were. It was like right below like the Georgia border or, um, you know, so it was like Atlanta, like right around Atlanta on the map. And so I told Chief the dream, I'm like, we're supposed to do our next event here. And I don't know why, but there's something here and we need to be there. And so through this course of, you know, like trying to plan and find the right place and suddenly we found ourselves at this place called Amicalola Falls. And so we lined it up to do our conference there and I didn't know it, but it was literally right on the Trail of the Tears. And then I was like, okay, so Atlanta, why, why Atlanta? And I was like, oh my gosh, Atlantis. And so it was like, ping, 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 you know, oh my gosh. <laughs> so we were guided there and like a big kind of um, concept that, or theme of our conference at that particular time was working around the remembrances of Atlantis and doing some healing around that. But I never really fully put it together why we there was just this presence of the trail of the tears, you know, being an aspect of this. And then poof, that your book lands in my lap. And I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> so, oh. you know, for me, that was just like this amazing synchronistic connection to how things unfold. And, and like you said, you know, like you're ready for something and then somebody comes into your life. And they're like the answer to your prayer and then things unfold. And then you start to go down these rabbit holes or, you know, gain information. And, you know, there's like this new concept coming to the surface for us to look at and explore. So I'm just in love with this book. I was going to read the beginning of this book. <laughs> so this is the book. You can see, like, I've got all these sticky notes and stuff. Oh, wait, let's see. <laughs> there we go so in the very beginning you've got a quote in here and I love this because it says you've all forgotten that you incarnated to fulfill a long ago promise made to yourself the promise of liberation liberation can only come when you abandon yourself to the complete dictation of the compassionate heart when you allow the surrender you will see the truth the depths and the expressions of this magical experience. Both are majestic and mundane, shallow and deep. In this way, you will finally liberate yourself and become a true steward of the world. Every life has a purpose, a plan, but realize that the only reality, the only real purpose, and the only thing that matters in the long run is the sincere cultivation of divine love. <laughs> so, and it says quoted by the higher self. Mm -hmm. Now that's is this your that's higher what self? It's, oh no, that's what it sounds like when the higher consciousness comes through my clients. It's like this wise, wise person that's so wise. But what's really fascinating to me is when you take anyone and you go deep within anyone, you reach the same place, you reach universal consciousness. And that's how I get all this information. It's that type of being that type of consciousness that's sharing this information with me wow okay so you know I feel like this book is a key that was brought forth to bridge you know like the multiple highly traumatic collective traumas to a much needed healing of humanity so we as a species can be liberated and so this, this quote, you know, the only thing that matters in the long run is the sincere cultivation of divine love. And it just, it feels like, you know, we're, we're always in this quest to return to love and yeah, we love are. yourself and just, you know, that being the most boldest power that there is. So I don't know, can you say more about what you see going on right now, just in terms sure. of the collective and you know, how some of this healing can come through, through some of the messages with that are coming forward in your book? 
Sure. They've really, I mean, the higher consciousness has really told me that all people really have to do is to read the book and they will process so much information that it's meant to trigger them in certain ways. And in that way, by being triggered, by processing the information, you can literally release thousands and thousands of years of trauma. But what you said is exactly true. This is the time when so many of us have planned to actually release this trauma and move forward in our life and move forward to another evolution of consciousness. So a lot of things that the higher consciousness has been saying is that this is the evolution of consciousness. That's why there's so much information just flooding us now. Also, if you think about it, um, even like 20 years ago, a lot of this information wasn't acceptable, but now it's starting to be more acceptable. We're starting to get to the point in our lives where we can process this information. And it's one of the reasons why this information is coming in like crazy. It's mm -hmm. everywhere. When, you know, when I, there's a couple things that they really wanted to let people understand. And one of the things that I thought was really fascinating was I asked Anawaya, I asked Anawaya, why, why did the white man do this? Because of all session, of all um, personal accounts that I've listened to over the years, nothing has really made, brought me to tears, like hearing, it's hard to even talk about hearing the firsthand perspective of walking the trail of tears of Anawaya's firsthand perspective. It's so horrible. It was nothing like anything I had ever heard in school. I felt like everything I heard in school was a lie. Yeah. And yeah. so I asked Anna why what happened to the white man? How could they do this to the Native Americans? And Anna Wyatt said something that really started to shift my own perspective. He said that I had to understand that the white man were some of the earliest victims of this negative influence or this energy that kind of asserted itself to the planet. And this happened so long ago, but the white man's culture was stolen from them so long ago that they don't even remember that they had a culture, but they lived amongst nature, just like every other indigenous tribe. They had magical beliefs. They believed things like fairies. They were pagans. They were witches, but it was stolen from them and they just forgot that they even had a culture and what was really interesting is this negative influences negative energies brought up many times by the higher consciousness when my clients are under hypnosis and this negative energy asserted itself to the planet back when the early days of seeding this planet from the star people the star beings that it happened by accident this wasn't supposed to be a planet that had this negative energy but part of what we're doing is we're releasing this layer of negative energy and as we do as we release our trauma, as we release part of this negative energy, we have no choice but to evolve ourselves and to move up in frequency. So the earth and us, we're evolving, we're becoming almost like a lighter being. We're actually holding more light and we're kind of evolving. Our frequency is raising, it's getting higher. And I can see this change happen even within my clients the brains of my clients are different than when I first started I started doing hypnosis and I became a master hypnotist in 2009 and when I first started people would be unconscious they wouldn't remember anything they would be so unconscious and basically the information was kept so separate from them but this interesting phenomenon started happening around 2012 where people were getting in these very deep states of hypnosis but feeling very awake and aware in their sessions and what the higher consciousness said was that our brains are evolving very quickly and we're almost like becoming our higher consciousness so back in the day there was this huge separation where this would be the conscious mind sorry this is hypnosis talk but this would be the conscious mind and this would be the very deep unconscious and there was a huge separation but now what's really occurring rapidly is the separation is getting less it's like this so people can be in very deep states but have access to their higher self and we're becoming our higher selves as we move up in this frequency it's really fascinating oh my gosh yeah and, and I'm so glad that you brought this up. And it's so fascinating that you're talking about how their brains are changing. So one of the things that Chief Golden Light Eagle shared with us at conferences here and there 
was, um, and you're talking about it in your book, there was an event that takes place um, basically where, okay, so for centuries, the negative energy has tried to wipe out the stories, but no matter how hard they tried, they couldn't get rid of the memories. The traditions have survived and these stories have been waiting, waiting for this time in history to return. And so there was this amazing experiment to see not only how humans would separate, but how they would eventually come back together. So one of the things that Chief was talking about was like in the very, let's just say beginning of time with humanity, um, there was a cataclysmic event that took place and it was an intentional event where it was almost like a loud sonic boom that was so loud that it literally shook and split the brains into two hemispheres. And they needed to do this. This is how fear was introduced to this planet. So fear really wasn't even a natural state until this event happened. And so it split the brain and it put humanity in fear. And so then we've been sort of trying to come out of this. We've been trying to elevate out of the fear again. And as you were saying, in a way, it would be like healing the brain again, because it would be coming more whole. So it's like resolving from duality back into wholeness. And so that was another thing that really stuck out for me. And it's so interesting that you're saying that people are actually like their brains are changing. And so to me, that's like a, such a beautiful insight and gift that, and, and like the validation, like the work that we're doing <laughs> is actually making a difference. So have, have you is. Ever heard anything like that before? No, never. And it's so confirming, you know, to hear these stories because I don't know, I'm not, I'm just a hypnotist. So I'm just busy work. I don't listen to anybody else's stuff or read anyone else's work because I simply don't have time. So it's amazing. It's amazing yeah. that this information is so, you know, confirming with other information. I know. I love it. And, you know, it's just, there's so many things that tie in with what, what you're writing about in your book. And then the things that were shared with us in the star teachings and, you know, we're, we're getting together for Sunfire and um, this happens to be the season right now when a lot of our groups are doing their sun dances. And so there's an actual um, part in your book where you talk about, um, <clears throat> you know, a lot of oh, the information sun. is sent through yeah. the portals of the sun. And this is, this is where the human gets their ideas. And yeah, so, I have no idea. And then, yeah. And then it goes on to talk about like how unfiltered sunlight is needed for the pineal gland to, to regulate itself. The sun mm -hmm. is a portal for information that was needed for the body. Um, you know, so I've already known for a while for myself how healing the sun is as a sun dancer and being able to, you know, talk with my eyes with the sun and, and really just, you know, receive the codes and get information and kind of go on a journey inside the sun. And you talked about, or there's a part in your book here that talks about a woman that you worked with that found out that she needed to spend more time outside without wearing her contact lenses and her glasses as a way for her to lose weight <laughs> it was so shocking and you know normally the subconscious will tell somebody who ha has a weight issue that it's their protection the body is being the protector and they need to release that fear and then they can you know, release the weight or they're just protecting themselves or something. So I was shocked when the higher consciousness said, oh no, the reason why she can't lose weight is she never goes outside without her contacts. And they said, every human needs a little unfiltered sunlight because they need to be downloaded with this information coming from the sun. And it was so fascinating to me. I didn't know. I don't wear contacts. So I guess I'm receiving this information, but it comes through the, the eyes and straight into the pineal gland. And it down, you know, it's not, it's actually not the first time I heard that information is sent that way because other, um, 
star people sometimes do that or higher realms they send the information through the portal of the sun and that's how it gets into the collective and someone might receive it and then they you know build some invention but it's so important to get a little unfiltered sunlight and it's so of course it's sunfire festival i mean i didn't put two and two together but it's so hilarious all these things that are there should be a new word for cool coincidences right. that are obvious <laughs> yeah, obvious coincidence but it's just so interesting it's this information is just coming through and that's one of the things that can really help people just like I never really you know you hear these things like it's important to do certain techniques like breathing and then it's important to ground but then when you hear it from the higher self for me I take notice i think oh wow okay it's really important to connect with nature they kept saying that the consciousness of nature or of you know the planet is getting stronger just like our consciousness is evolving so is you know the nature realm kingdom whatever you want to call it mother earth and that we need to develop a relationship with it we're we need to we need to start communicating with it even just go, going and sitting outside and asking questions that everything will show up in nature. It's just, I thought Absolutely. that's really great information. Yeah. And, you know, look at how much we've been taught <clears throat> and programmed to believe that the sun's bad for us. No. You know, so don't look at the sun with your eyes. It'll hurt your eyes. Right. You know, wear your sunscreen, otherwise you're going to get skin cancer, you know, and then the products <laughs> that we put on our skin are actually what caused the cancer. Right, but, right. You know, we're supposed to wear sunglasses and it blocks out all that information, you know? Right. And so it's, we're, we're like, you know, the sun is like a computer for us. So I learned from working with the star knowledge too, that, um, you know, looking in, into the sun through like this pyramid of light, let's just say, um, it comes in and it goes into all your glands up here, your pineal, your pituitary, and your hypothalamus gland. And it is when you spend time talking with the sun with your eyes, it's actually activating all those glands, but most specifically the hypothalamus gland, which is our master immune system gland. So it is like the regulator for our entire immune system. And so, um, I was noticing some changes in my body and, you know, having hot flashes and, you know, kind of going through that transition. And I was like, I I'm willing to try anything right now. And I thought I'm going to do a little prayer meditation and, and pray into the sun and really talk to my, my, my pineal gland and my hypothalamus, hypothalamus gland and ask that my hormonal system be rebalanced. And sure enough, my hot flashes stopped. And oh, amazing. So like, you know, it just, I don't know, with the, with the focused intention, when you know these things, you know, you can really expand on your own well-being and your own healing. And, you know, you're saying over and over how you're able to help your clients really get close to what it is that they need to heal. And, and they're, the they're healing up with it themselves. You're just kind of like guiding them to it. So, and what's so fascinating is healing is becoming so easy these days. It's it's just like what you said about how we're programmed. It's be, I think it would be interesting if you take everything that you learned and you flip it, then that's probably the truth. Like, okay, sunscreen is good. Flip that. So, okay, sunscreen is not good. You know, because we were never taught any ever how to read our bodies. We Like I hear it every day in the sessions, but the body's simply just a messenger every time, anytime you get any kind of issue or illness or whatever, or even accidents, they don't happen by accident. They happen on purpose. And it's always a message. It's, it's almost akin to like energy. It's just energy. It's a message. And once the message is heard and understood, it can instantly be released and healed. And the way you can tell what the message is in your body is that the body is super literal very, very literal. You'll have an issue that will, you know, usually will be according to what's in the, on the body. Like if you have an issue with your hands, maybe if it's your right hand that has a problem, you could be holding on too tightly to something right now, or the left hand holding on too tightly to something from the past. Feet are usually 
either um, do you feel stable in this environment, the right side of the body is happening right now, the left side is in the past or past life, and you just go through your body and it will have a literal message for you. But all you really need to do is just get quiet with yourself, focus inwards and ask the question, what is the very root cause of this issue and, and see what comes up. And when you get the message and you do whatever it is that you need to do, then it can be released so much easier than we were ever taught. Definitely. Yeah. I went through a, another really intense experience um, having Lyme disease and oh. I went through two years of just excruciating, debilitating, you know, symptoms of that. And I really just, it was a time for me to really explore all the, the pain points within my body because it really targeted my joints. It really targeted my knees, especially. And so I got to spend a lot of time going into my right knee and my left knee and present life, past life, wow. you know, all the karma and all the, you know, the oppression of the feminine aspects and, you know, focusing on um, healing my ego and my stubbornness, you know, just like all of these things. And what I learned from that whole experience, like the final message was, you just needed to love yourself. And it was like, that, that was the liberating factor. And that's when the medicine came that pretty much just knocked it out for me. And I, I've been symptom free for a couple of years now. And it was rough, that's amazing. <laughs> really rough. But, but that's what exactly what it feels like, like an aha moment, like you've got the message and then that's it. That's, that's it. If you put it into practice, it's all you need to do to release something like that. I had a client that had debilitating Lyme disease and her higher self said that they needed to get her to start meditating that she was you know too busy doing other things and they had to slow her down mm -hmm. and she was actually bedridden for I think it was a year or something like that and um, so she had to spend time really getting to know her internal side but you don't have you don't have to go through these things unless it's in your contract that you signed up for you all you just need to listen as as deeply as you can to yourself mm -hmm. when you know something it's easier said than done though right yeah. way easier <laughs> oh my gosh right and especially when you're in it in the pain you yeah know, there's nothing yeah. that can take you out of life more than pain yeah and, pain and draws so your like attention yeah and um oh my gosh I totally lost my train of thought because it was <laughs> <laughs> well it's 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 hard when you're going through it and you want to get out of it. It's so yeah. difficult. It's, it's just horrific, you know, when you have to go right. through some yeah. terrible tragedy and, you know, or event or something. Yeah. And we've been also conditioned that, you know, to seek outside of ourself right. for the relief, for the cure, for right. support, you know, like we've externalized so much of our power outside of us to something else and a lot of it does go very, you know, pharmaceutical related. And that was the right. same for me. Like they wanted to put me on all these meds, you know, like doxycycline and, you know, go in for an IV drip every day for an hour to knock this thing out, you know? And it was just like, no, I cannot do any of that right. stuff, you know? And so it was really a beautiful journey as bad as it sucked, <laughs> You know, right. it, really, it brought so much strength and power within me. And now my ability to talk to my body is so much stronger. So like, I'll go through times when I'm like, what do I need today? I need something. And it'll be like, you need sulfur. Okay. Or you need boron or, you know, you need to increase your magnesium and, you know, like I'm and eat this food or don't eat that food for a while. You know, like it's like it's become kind of fun just to kind of check in and and really embrace that power within. And I think that's a big shift that we're seeing collectively as we're ascending as humanity is that we're we're really reclaiming our power back. We're really starting to trust our own inner wisdom versus, you know, something outside of ourselves for that savior, for that you know, next easy button to get us by. Right. So that's some of the fun stuff I like to celebrate. What and a gift. I mean, I'm sure it was terrible going through it. Just absolutely terrible. But, it was, it was but an amazing gift. 
Yeah. And, you know, and, and such a beautiful message in the end, Jen, you just need to love yourself. And, you know, at the time when it all hit me, it was, it, it actually anchored in because of a really extreme emotional traumatic event. And um, it just locked in right in that moment of just that deep, intense heartbreak. And, it, you know, it just everything fell away from my existence at that point. And I just went into this intense hole of darkness. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, just to come out of it, it, it's so liberating. You know, we were talking about the liberation. Yeah. So there's well, it's a- interesting because, the you know, we're here obviously to help one another because we are all one. Actually, there's a lot more truth to that statement than I think people realize, but we're here to help one another, but we're ultimately here to master ourselves, to help ourselves. Because when I, I've asked the higher self, what is the most important thing that you want people to do? And they have said many times to really get to know ourselves and to master ourselves, because what happens is when you fully master yourself or become almost like a spiritual master, what it does is it leaves an imprint within the consciousness, even on this earth planet, because most people, they come in, they have an experience of a lifetime, then they leave their body and then everything's known again. They know everything and they plan their their next life, but there's little left behind to show for their lifetime that they just left. But when you master yourself, when you become a spiritual master, this imprint never leaves. It leaves, it stays within the consciousness that anyone can use, just like Jesus or Buddha or other people that have done this before. That imprint will always be there in the consciousness. So if we can really fully get to know ourselves master ourselves then that will be so huge for our collective it will help everyone involved oh my gosh yes self-mastery love it (laughs) (laughs) well and you know you're doing such an amazing work and you know I would love to have a session with you and at the same time you know I just I remind myself of my the words I just spoke like you know to go inside and we all have this ability to go inside and ask questions to our higher self and kind of take us on our own journeys too and so um you know I just I I love being able to do both and sometimes we need to to have an experience of what that's like in order to really know what to do to do it ourselves. And so I agree. I agree. It helps to have a guide, but you can do it yourself. Um, when you wake up in the morning and you can still remember your dream, that's the deep theta state. If you can prolong that state for a little while, where you can still remember your dream. You can do so many things. It's such an underutilized tool. You can program your mind, say nice thoughts to yourself, tell your body how wonderful it is. Or you can ask questions, ask a question, and then wait for the very first thought to pop into your mind. But make sure you have a pen and paper nearby because you'll forget pretty fast otherwise. But it's a great tool. You can just prolong that state right when you wake up in the morning or maybe as you're falling asleep, but I think it's easier in the morning. Mm. And I'm running a lot of workshops. Of course, I will also be at Sunfire Festival. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell us more about what you have going on, because I know you're doing a lot. You're going to be at the Disclosure Fest, um, the Stairway to the Stars event for 11-11 in Vegas. Yes, I'm so excited. Yeah, so shout out to Adrian and Disclosure Fest and Stairway to the Stars. That's going to be an amazing event at the Luxor in Las Vegas. I also want to give a shout out to Michelle Anderson, who's my um, co-producer with Sunfire Fest. Um, She's got her Awakening Code Radio. She's doing so much to support everybody right now. We're all in this together. We're all in this, you know, conscious collaboration without competition. And so, um, but please tell us more about your retreats that are coming up and anything else that you want to share as the final piece of this podcast well you can find out about what i'm up to next on my website um www.theholistichypnotist.com and i have a workshop coming up in september but it's it's almost sold out there's only a few spots left to that but i'm 
I'm doing a lot of different events, but I'm very excited about Sunfire Fest and I can't <laughs> wait. I hope to see everyone there and, you know, just share in this collective journey because like you said, we're, we're here to really help each other not be competitive. Actually, we do a lot better if we help one another. We actually become more successful ourselves. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have been programmed to believe the opposite, but that's not really how it works. We really do help ourselves when we help other people as well. I, love that. I don't I mean love like that. violate your boundaries, but you know, when we do that extra step to help others. Yeah. And one of the things that I wanted to share before we wrap up is that, you know, we're going to, so Sunfire Fest, you know, yeah, it's a festival, but it's, it's going to be less of the party and more about some of the important work that we can do when we come together with that focused intention. So we're going to be doing a lot of different ceremony. We're going to be working with the star teachings and the symbols. Um, we're going to be in the corn moon for that particular time. So it's a really potent time to do really deep healing. And so we've got a lot of indigenous elders that are coming to be part of Sunfire Fest from the area. So we have a Ute elder, his name is Nathan Strong Elk. He's gonna be opening, doing the opening ceremonies for us and singing his medicine songs and also leading Sweat Lodge and things like that. And then something really interesting also presented it itself. Um, as we're talking about the Trail of the Tears and how we've had these really just intensely awful things that have happened in the past that have sort of carried in in through our DNA through our ancestral lineage um there's an opportunity for anybody that is willing to do this healing and to step over the abyss into um, a, a bigger sense of freedom to end the traumatic experience of the cultural gener and generational trauma that's been plagued in humanity. So there's going to be a wiping of the tears for anybody that's interested in having um, a healing from that. And so that's going to be a really special um, piece of what Sunfire is bringing. So anybody that's, you know, having the moment of just like, I just don't want this to rule my life anymore. I want to be in a space of heal, you know, being healed and moving forward so that our children don't have to con con continue to carry that through their bloodline. And so it's, I, 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 it's sensitive for me because it's vulnerable and I don't have the right words all the time to say this with the true, um, purity that it needs because this is a big deal this is a i mean this is a very very touchy world with racial you know racism and cultural generational traumas that have been passed down and so but anyways this is just an opportunity for us to take one more step closer to that freedom that liberation that sense of you know a new fresh future moving together in unity with each other and so um it's just going to be so beautiful and we have such amazing grandmothers coming as well so there's going to be lots of ceremony lots of different workshops and pre presentations coming on board we've got live music at night the star the the sky watching at night is just phenomenal there so <laughs> plus all the water play and everything else is just going to make it really really fun so we're getting the full spectrum experience of ceremony and song dance medicine teachings and so much more so Sarah I'm just so thrilled that you said yes and that you're coming it's going to be so wonderful oh I'm so thrilled too I can't wait I'm really really excited all right well, on that note, we'll wrap up and hopefully you'll come join us at Sunfire Festival in August, August 25th through the 28th. It's near Durango, Colorado in the Four Corners area. You can find out more at sunfirefest.com. Thanks so much for tuning in with us tonight. We'll see you next time.